Hey everybody, today I'm going to be reviewing Trusty Cook's Ball Peen Dead Blow Hammers. Now they come in four different sizes and a ball peen hammer as you know is a very handy tool to have no matter what you're working on, especially if you're an automotive technician because it will allow you to put a lot of force on a very small point. But typically with a ball peen hammer, let's say this normal wooden handled ball peen hammer, you're going to get a lot of recoil or bounce when you hit something where a dead blow ball peen hammer, instead of bouncing back, is basically going to stop flat on that surface. I'm going to show you some examples now of exactly what I'm talking about with that, and then we're going to go over some more features with these hammers. Okay, I'm going to be hitting this lower control arm that's clamped down in the vise with a standard ball peen hammer. And then I'm going to take the trusty Cook ball peen dead blow hammer and hit roughly the same spot, and you'll be able to see that where the trusty Cook is going to hit and it will stop, the standard ball peen hammer, like anybody would already have in their toolbox, is going to bounce around and will not stay in place. So here we go. This is the standard ball peen hammer. And you can see it'll hit right here and then it bounces. Now I'm going to try that with the trusty cook hammer. I'll hit it with the exact same amount of force right here. And you can see that all that force is going into the point of this ball peen hammer end and it's not bouncing around because there's that steel shot inside giving it that dead blow effect. So that's one of the major differences you'll see between a standard ball peen hammer and then the trusty cook dead blow ball peen hammer. With the standard hammer, when I was striking the surface, the head would bounce all around and I could not control it. But when I switched to the trusty cook hammer, I was able to strike that surface, there was no bounce and there was no recoil because it basically would stick to the surface like a magnet would stick to metal. That shot in there, because it's actually going to create that dead blow action, it's going to stop immediately, it's not going to bounce around, and it's not going to damage anything surrounding the part. Now, that's really not a big concern when you're looking at large parts like this lower control arm. But if you're working inside an engine bay, or really around anything delicate, you don't want that hammer to possibly bounce around and damage anything else. But with that dead blow hammer, it's not going to be a problem, because all the force is going to be in that initial blow, and there's not going to be anything left to bounce around and damage any neighboring parts. Here's a closer look at the hammers themselves. This is the BP-16, and this is the BP-32. And other than the size difference on these, the construction on them is exactly the same. The head is going to be a hollow steel canister with a solid steel rod making up the handle that's welded on. Inside that canister is going to be steel shot, which gives it that dead blow effect. And once they put everything together, they'll insert it into a mold and hot inject this polyurethane, which is the orange, right over top of the entire hammer itself. And when everything dries, out pops the finished product. Now what you'll see is that the handle is skinny at the top and then it flares out. That is where the actual textured grip begins. And then at the very end, it flares out at a nice beveled end. So when you're gripping onto here and you swing it, there's no way for your hand to slide off because the end is the widest part of the handle itself. I think that the handle itself is very comfortable and the hammer has a nice balance and feel to it. Now, one concern that I did have when I first started looking at these was the fact that it's a one-piece construction and it doesn't have that typical rubber overmold grip like a lot of hammers do. But it has not been a problem at all because it is contoured and they do have that textured grip built in. So I have not had any problems at all with the hammer slipping or falling out of my hand when I use it. A few more things I want to point out with Trusty Cook as a brand they are 100% made and assembled in the USA, and they are an OEM manufacturer of dead blow hammers for many of the other major tool brands, namely SK, Matco, Cornwell, Armstrong, as well as S-Wing hammers. So when you look at those tools and you look at Trusty Cook, you're getting the exact same quality with a different name stamped on the tool itself. If you like this video, please click like. If you like my channel, please click subscribe. And thanks for watching.